Massachusetts. The undefeated Patriots hosting the 1 and 13 Miami Dolphins. Hello, friends. Jim Nance along with Phil Sims. You've got that perfect season intact right now for the Patriots, Phil. You've got Miami off its breakthrough, finally getting a win last week. Can they be competitive here today? Well, believe it or not, you look at the Miami Dolphins, such an emotional victory to get that first one. Can you get that energy and get fired up again to play the best team in the NFL? And you think about what? where is New England's motivation? Well, we heard it. We were here Friday all day. They did not like the way they played last week against the New York Jets. So New England fired up, wants to come out and play well right from the start. This game brought to you in high definition here on CBS. It's a balmy late afternoon here in Foxborough with the temperature near 50, light breezes. There had been all week long forecast for heavy rains during this game, but no sign of any precipitation as they kick away to the Dolphins. Ted Ginn Jr., the first rounder out of Ohio State, finds no opening at all, and they'll start from the 23-yard line with Cleo Lemon getting his sixth start of the season. We are just underway here in Foxborough, Gillette Stadium. Jim Nance and Phil Sims welcoming the audience that saw Jacksonville steamroll the Raiders today and lock up the number one wild card in the AFC playoffs. They will be the number five seed come playoff time. The Jags, this is the first snap of the game. The Dolphins receiving the kick, and they start from the 24 with two tight ends and Lemon on a little play action. And that should have been caught by Ted Ginn. Not that. Lorenzo Booker will see a lot of him today, and he comes in on second down. And they'll go with Booker, and this is something that's worked very effectively for them in recent weeks. He's had six catches, or in between first for Belichick and the Patriots, who have far loftier goals than just the Pro Bowl. It's a third and six, and Chapman flanking the quarterback. Good protection for Lemon, then in and out of the hands of Justin Peel. So this series began with Ted Ginn Jr. dropping what certainly would have been enough for about an 11-yard gain and a first. And now the Patriots, after forcing the three and out, send Troy Brown back to receive the punt. Active for the first time this year. And the crowd rising to their feet to salute the longtime veteran who's been out most of the all year long with a knee it was on the physically unable to perform list and finally activated for this one touching the ball for the first time this season and Brown takes it out for about a nine yard return after a 51 yard punt now in that first matchup down in Miami Tom Brady through six touchdowns had the perfect quarterback and they're coming out with four wides with Gaffney and Stallworth and it's Falk in the backfield. So they come right out with the spread. And it's Welker. And that secondary, again, torched by Brady in the first game this year. Won by New England 49-28. They put up 42, in fact, in the first half. So it's a second down and four. And it's over to Falk. And finally touched and pushed out at about the 47. By it's up right from the start, and he was right. They are spreading the defense out. Miami, do they have enough guys to cover all the wide receivers? That's the big question. And again, they couldn't stop him. The aerial attack the first time they met this year. So New England picking right up with it. Going for the third straight play. At this time, it's Stallworth. He's got nine yards and a vicious hit at the end. Andre Goodman slow to get up. So many different ways. Look at all the movement up front. Jason Taylor, the pass rusher, standing up. He's going to be in pass coverage this time, looking for a short receiver coming across. They do get to the quarterback, but Tom Brady, even though Stallworth not wide open, throws a laser, gets the completion. It's a second and one. This time with five wides. And it's Stallworth on the slant. Goodman riding him down. 
And it's just target practice do four plays for Brady and the Patriots. That goes for 16. Yeah, everybody's had, well, some of the teams have had success moving around, trying to create confusion for Tom Brady. And that confusion is who's going to block who? But once they figure it out, and the fact that they did not throw the football very well last week, of course, wind and rain had something to do with it, and they managed the game, I thought, almost perfectly. Good conditions. Give it to Tom Brady and let him throw it. Stallworth with two catches already. No catches last week against the Jets. With plenty of time. Going for Moss. And it's over his head. He had a step on both uh, Andre Goodman and Jason Allen. I've seen that a lot so far when we've done Patriot games. Tom Brady's trying to throw to his left. He looked at two receivers as long as he could. Still had time and goes well Randy Moss is going deep. He was actually open but a little playing safe overthrew him in the end zone. Troy Brown comes in on this play. Lined up in the backfield on the left side of Brady second and ten. Work it across the middle and Gaffney has the grab for five but third down on the way. You know, Jim, Jason Taylor was a game time decision. We saw him out there before the game working out. It did not look great, but he's in there. And so far today, he's going to knock Troy Brown this time out of the pass pattern. He has dropped back in pass coverage every single down. And that might be because they want New England to worry about him, but he might, might not have enough strength in his left foot to push off and rush the pass. Breaks the Jim Langer. Team record 129 consecutive games played on third down. They have the first if they give him the spot, which they do. It's Gaffney inside the 19. Again, Jason Taylor 99 in pass coverage, trying to confuse him with the blitz. In New England, they see so many different blitzes each week from every team that play. They've gotten very adept into picking those blitzes up. Tom Brady sees it, and they always have somebody short to pick up the first down. Usually it's Wes Welker. Now we see Maroney for the first time, and Heath Evans. And a timeout by the Dolphins' defense. Seven snaps for New England, seven pass plays, and they're driving already. A good reason to call timeout on the Miami side. Yeah, yeah you know this New England team, well, you need 12, you don't need 10. But they called timeout. I thought maybe they were calling it just to stop the momentum early in the game and try to make them kick a field goal instead of getting the touchdown. But it's 10 guys on the field. Troy Brown back in in a slot to the left. New England without a pair of tight ends today. Watson sitting down still with that ankle. And Kyle Brady also inactive. From behind they get to Tom Brady at the 21. That's Joey Porter. They get to him. The coverage down the field makes Tom Brady hold it a little longer from the outside. Joey Porter did a great job. What he did, you saw him. He grabs the defensive lineman, pull offensive lineman, pulled him down and got around him. Nobody opened down the field. Jason Taylor once again in coverage with a double team on Wes Welker. Loses three yards, second down, 13. And again, some pressure. Brady escapes. Slides at the 10. It'll be third and two. That goes for 11. Well, we saw it against the Baltimore Ravens the night they had that last drive to win the game. But Tom Brady, more and more, because everybody has taken their extra defenders and they're putting them in pass coverage. And once you go feet first, you are telling the defense, I'm giving up. You can't hit him. But nobody's watching the quarterback. So when he runs, a lot of space to pick up some yards. Yeah, the Red Sox are re well represented here today. The world champions, I'm sure they were impressed with that little hook slide. Safe at the 11 yard line, third down and two. And Brady to the end zone, wide open. Randy Moss, touchdown, New England. There is a flag in the end zone.
illegal contact. Defense number 56. Penalties declined. Play results in a touchdown. For Moss's 20th touchdown catch of the season. Again, trying to double cover Randy Moss. Jason Allen behind, linebacker underneath. That's not enough to keep Randy Moss from getting wide open. So Moss only the second to ever have 20 touchdown receptions in a season in the history of the league. Rice the other, seven out a step closer to the Manning single season touchdown pass record. He's three from tying the 49 of Manning from a couple seasons back. And that kick will set up the Dolphins at the 40. A rare miscue for Kostowski. Kickoff out of bounds. By rule, the ball is placed at the 40-yard line. First down. Yeah, Brady was perfect down in Miami against the Dolphins. Continuing right where he left off two months ago. Clean shaven. Yep. So much for the mustache. <laughs> Dolphins with their second possession. And it begins at the 40. They're trying to run it between the tackles with Chapman. And that's only a to this Miami offense. And don't let them run it and tell them if you want to win, you're going to have to throw it to win the game. They're going with three receivers. Derek Hagan coming in on a second and nine. Lemon. Oh, well hit. That's Rodney Harrison pummeling David Martin. Rodney Harrison, who was born the day before Miami closed out its 14-0 regular season back in 72, the day before. And he's got a little greeting for the Dolphins here early in this one. Experience, safety, Rodney Harrison, Cleo Lemon never looks the other way, stares at the receiver, and he goes, we got a pretty good pass rush, so I'm not going to go for any fakes. He runs right there and able to knock the pass away. They bring in reinforcement in that secondary with Randall Gay coming in. Third and nine. The blitz. And they were trying to hook up with Lorenzo Booker. A second straight three and out for Miami. Well, when you're trying to work the clock, shorten the game, that's what Miami wants to do. What is it, six plays, five passes? I guess when you come to New England, you just want to throw it. Brandon Fields for a second time to boot it to Troy Brown. Fields has punted 62 times this year. Only three times has it demanded a fair catch. He hits these line drivers that are returnable. And Brown unable to shake the second one downfield. So Courtney Bryan on the hit. There's Rodney Harrison with a hit to remember. He can do. Trying to pick up some sort of special frequency from the North Pole. Brady this season, by the way, in the first quarter of play, 12 touchdown passes, no picks. And he continues to go up top over the head of Gaffney. How about that first series by Mr. Brady down the field? Well, they let their attentions be known. So many little... The good throws over the middle, then waiting on Randy Moss in the back of the end zone. But it's always key. They're a tremendous passing team, and it's picking up those third, da third down and shorts to give him more opportunities to throw it down the field. You see his numbers on the season against Miami. Now, it hasn't always been like that. Well, he's just getting even for all the years of having bad numbers against the Miami Dolphins. A second and ten. Plenty of time, and it's Welker. He is lassoed by Courtney Bryan after nine yards. It's so long to throw the football for Tom Brady. You expect Wes Welker to break towards the sideline, which he does most of the time. Then when he goes across the field, almost impossible to cover him. And, you know, Jim, I was talking to you during the commercial. You're the Miami Dolphins. You finally win last week. The emotion, where can you find it to play against a 14 and 0 team. A third and one. They finally run the ball. And Maroney picks up the first down. Before the pop by Derek Pope. Gain of three. And again, they move the chains. It's not just the emotional 
you made this point that, you, that they are the ones that would have a letdown after what was like a Super Bowl atmosphere at the end of that game is to see Taylor Gimpy as we knew he would be from time to time in this game but they had the win they had all the discussion during the week about a possible sale and then of course you had Bill Parcells coming on board yeah. as the head of uh, football operations I think the emotions of finally winning the game for this these players such a relief we heard it in our meetings last night with them and you don't want to be part of that history of being a team that never wins a game during a season First down, play action fake. Brady from behind shakes it off and gets walloped a second time. Joey Porter was the second to get to him. Somehow Brady was able to get free from Holiday. Yeah, they're looking to throw the football down the field and deep. And the fact that, boy, that was a great job by Tom Brady getting away. Randy Moss was open about 35, 40 yards down the field. That's what they were looking at the big play. But Miami, through the years, they have had success getting to Tom Brady and hitting him. They'll run it this time with Fall easily into the secondary and stop perhaps just shy of another first down. Lance Schulter's able to stop him. This may demand the measurement. You know, as I watch this game here today, third and short, Jim, even when you sack Tom Brady, you almost get there, you throw it. It's just such an unusual offense. It's it's the rest of them you'd feel good. All the other offenses in the NFL, not this one. You know they can pick up yards and jumps. It's third and one, and they make a play. And that was Pope and Porter crashing in. And Falk is stopped short, and now it's fourth and a foot. And they're bringing out the punting unit. Jason Taylor, by the way, set out one snap and was back in on that third and one. Uh, he loves to play here in New England. He knows what they stand for. He admires their players. And this, to him, this is their heated rivalry game. And he wanted to make sure he was part of it here today. Hansen had his first block punt of his career last week. No issue this time. As Ted Ginn Jr. runs away from this one. Billy Andrews. Keeping an eye on it. And we'll down it at the 18. 43 yard boot. 7 0 Patriots. Brady DeMoss, the game's touchdown. You can go to CBSSports.com for complete coverage of all the NFL playoff races, the latest news, playoff scenarios. It's all there online, CBSSports.com. Well, can the Dolphins find a first first down of this game? This is their third series. Lemon chased out of the pocket so able to get away from Warren and now steps out of bounds avoids the sack and picks up a couple of yards give him three Cleo Lemon who got his first NFL start last season on New Year's Eve day at Indianapolis closed out the season starting for Miami and they were competitive in that game against the Colts he actually had a late game heave to the end zone looking for the Hail Mary to win it but last week he had an impressive performance including that 64 yard winning touchdown pass to Greg Camarillo in overtime the longest play of the season for Miami. And it's Chapman slicing and picking up good yardage out to the 29. Let's go to the update in New York with James Brown. Hey Jim and Phil you know the Buccaneers are fighting Seattle for the third seed in the NFC playoffs with San Francisco Sean Hill hooking up with Daryl Jackson a 21 yard strike that puts San Francisco out in front of Tampa Bay 7 6 in the second Jim Nance and Phil Sims. Thank you JB and Dallas securing the number one seed today by virtue of Green Bay's loss to Chicago so the Packers will be the two a third and one and they hey, sneak for it. Out. And pick up the first. So Cleo Lemon, Phil, you've had a chance to watch him on tape. You saw him in person. What are your thoughts about this fourth-year player out of Arkansas State who was undrafted when he came into the league? Well, you know, of course, Jim, he was at San Diego with the San Diego Chargers, Cam Cameron, offensive coordinator there. So there's a history, and Cleo Lemon said that was wonderful when he came to the Miami Dolphins. When he got his chance to start this year, I did not think he played well. He moved around when he shouldn't have. At times, and even Cam Cameron said it, but since he's come back into the starting lineup, has settled down, and as he said, he's got a better feel of the game. 
They run it again up the middle after picking up their initial first down of this game with Chapman for about four yards. He has, in Cameron's words, really made progress. Settle, settle yep. down, getting experience to play, learning how to deal with getting beat up during the game, get back in there on Monday, go to work, take the criticism from the press, try to lead your teammates during the week. Those are all factors, young quarterbacks, until you experience it, you just don't realize how hard it is. And he's done much better since he's come back. Kind of interesting, when he was shipped from San Diego to Miami, he was traded for A.J. Feely, who had the big game here as the Philadelphia quarterback a month ago. So again, now they're going with this running attack that you expected hey, hey, to see, and that goes for three hey. yards with Chapman. Well, Cam Cameron showed a lot of, said a lot of wonderful things about New England. And of course, you have to. They're 14 and 0. And he goes, the weak spot, not many of them on the team. But he goes, I want to see if Junior Seau inside and Teddy Bruschi, they're older, if they want to tackle. So we need to run hard right at them. Jesse Chapman, the running back. Powerful, strong, runs through tackles. See if they want to do that today. They face third and a little less than three. They've run it the last five plays. A good fake, little toss. Peel has it and has the first. Even though he was chopped by Harrison, he has five yards and a first. You know, as Cam Cameron talked about how he wants to Shorten the game. This is how you do it. If you get third downs, if you can pick up a couple third downs, it you can take five and six minutes off the clock if you call the right sequences of plays against the defense. And that's what you want to do. Good job that time by Cleo Lemon looking down the field, knowing he only needed a few yards and throws it short. A little more than a minute to go in this first quarter. And Miami's offense catching a little rhythm for the first time. Thomas coming in on the quarterback. Who gets it away in time. And a punishing blow delivered by James Sanders. David Martin for the second time in this quarter is decked. I don't know how many games we've done this year, the New England Patriots. But many times I will see receivers open down the field. But it doesn't matter. The quarterback does not have the time. And when you make a quarterback rush, what does he do? He throws it off target and he puts his receivers in a position to take hits like James Sanders just delivered. James Sanders, who last week saw Eugene Wilson come in for him. And Wilson had the pick and a run back for a touchdown, as well as a fumble recovery. A timeout called by Miami. We'll have second and ten coming up out of the timeout. For you, you I had seven wonderful years being down in somebody. El Paso, Jimmy Rogers, and all that crew down there. Experts at hospitality, and that'll be on CBS New Year's Eve. So here we go, second and ten, and almost intercepted by Sanders, who had the big hit a moment ago on Martin. They were trying to go to Ted Ginn Jr. Well, they're trying to go to Ted Ginn Jr. and Greg Camarillo. The inside receiver going deep, nobody open. Be careful with the football when you're the Miami Dolphins, of course, playing the New England Patriots. Your margin of error is about zero. You make one or two mistakes, and you almost have no chance of winning the game. Now the Dolphins have converted already twice on third down on this drive, but this is a third and long. And they've got pressure with Harrison coming in. Lemon will step out well short of the first. Boy, Harrison was chasing him down, got spun around, and still was able to give a chase Blitz. after Lemon. Jim, being a good blitzing team, two from the outside at the last second. Blitzing is about spacing the field and timing it up with the snap of the offense. And Rodney Harrison and Junior Seau timed it up perfectly. Just couldn't make the tackle on Cleo Lemon. So Troy Brown about to get a handle for the third time. Brandon Fields. And that's a fair catch. That's again only the fourth time this season that a Fields punt has. I'll give you 10 guesses. <laughs> I'm afraid. 42 seconds to go in the quarter. And by the way, that New England defense has not allowed 
a touchdown, an offensive touchdown in seven quarters. Meanwhile, on offense, they're going Maroney, and Maroney's racing for a blocker in front. It's Moss sticking on the block, and that's all the way to the 28 before Porter is able to race after. Maroney went right over to Moss and thanked him. 51 yards. Something we saw more of early in the year. You're so worried about stopping the passes of the New England Patriots, you get passive in your run defense, and they catch them by surprise, wide open for Lawrence Maroney, and good job by Randy Moss blocking down the field. Maroney's longest rush of the season before that one was 19. This one's 32 yards longer than that. In fact, that's a career long, and it closes out the first quarter. 7-0, New England. You're watching. I'm Ron Winter. On behalf of our crew and all of the NFL officials, we'd like to wish everyone a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And a Merry Christmas from CBS Sports. Jim Nance, Phil Simms. We start the second quarter, and New England is inside the 30 of Miami after a 51-yard gallop by Maroney. Stepping up in the pocket, going to the end zone, and over the head is Stallworth. That one well managed by Travis Daniels. A lot of different looks. Jason Taylor again in pass coverage. A double move by Dante Stallworth, and it looks like it might have a chance. The football should be thrown inside. Instead, Tom Brady throws it outside, so it's an easy breakup. A second and ten, back to the ground they go. Falk holding on to that tackle all the way was Bonnie Holiday, but it still picks up five. Third and five coming up. Looks like the Miami defense is going to try to rush three linemen at Tom Brady and put the extra guy in pass coverage, try to double team most likely Randy Moss and Wes Welker. So they're moving in on the most touchdowns in a season record, and that one belongs to the 84 edition of the Dolphins. Also moving in on most points scored in a season. That would be the 16-game season. That belongs to Minnesota from a few years back. We'll pick up the first with Gaffney. And finally, gang tackle at the 14. Goes for nine. You know, Jim, Jim, they throw the football so much. When they throw these short passes, they are tremendous at catching it and just diving forward for three and four extra yards. Well, Gaffney certainly has come on on as an added bonus. We saw him really excel last year late in the season and in the playoffs. When you throw it this much, all your receivers are going to get better because you're going to practice it, but more importantly, you do it in the games. So first and 10 from the 14. Will Brady get another one to the end zone? No, double covered, and they got a flag against Miami. Travis Daniels. Trying to plea his case, he's not going to win. Pass interference, defense number 29. Because the foul occurred in the end zone, the ball was placed at the one yard line. First down. You said it right, they do have him double covered. Travis Daniels is in good position. And if he doesn't reach his arms out, he beats Randy Moss to the spot. So it's not a foul, but the, by reaching out and grabbing Randy Moss, I think that's what drew the penalty. Other than that penalty on the kickoff, that's the first penalty of the game. They bring in Eccles, Echo, and Evans, and they go for the toss instead, and it's Moss with his second touchdown grab. And Brady inches another step closer to the record. Yeah, just good play action fake. They do it so well down inside. When Charlie Weiss was the offensive coordinator, they were good at this, and they have continued that trend. Moss is within one of the season reception record as far as touchdowns. Of Weiss is 22 back in 87, and he had an abbreviated season. Did Rice? Moss now two on the day, 21 on the year. Brady to Moss again, 14 zip. Moss, a one-yarder for Brady. Cam Cameron had seen Moss twice a year when he was the San Diego offensive coordinator. 
Doesn't even recognize the guy from recent years out west. And it, 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 you're right, Jim. He said it's amazing that the difference, Randy Moss, what he has shown here in New England versus what he did with the Oakland Raiders. Called it the greatest transformation from one year to the next. All the way down to the goal line. And again, Jr. And that's Rodney Harrison playing on the kick coverage team. He's everywhere. Running him out after a 21-yard run back. Beautiful throw, one-on-one. -on -one. Tom Brady gets to wait that extra second. And Tom Brady, he's throwing a lot of touchdowns, but man, he enjoys them. That's what I love about it. <laughs> Little celebration, butts heads with his teammates, and watch this. It's a good thing Moss doesn't get knocked out right here on the jaw. <laughs> with the jaw butt. So Miami in the hole that they feared all week. They were trying to avoid. Lemon and pass on target to Marty Booker. We've got an update back to New York and James Brown. Hey, Jim and Phil. With Tennessee up 7-0, Jets answer right back. Chad Pennington moving out of the pocket, hooking up with Jericho Cotri, a nine-yard strike. But the point after is blocked. It is a 7-6 Tennessee lead. Tennessee looking to keep his playoff hopes alive. Back to Jim and Phil. Thank you, JB. Not only are their hopes alive, they control their destiny. If they beat the Jets today and then win at Indianapolis next week, the Titans will take the final wild card berth. They control it now with Cleveland losing today. Chapman is swamped behind the line of scrimmage. Things starting to crystallize uh, for the most part, Phil. And Pittsburgh wins the division with the Browns' loss. So the one and the two are set with New England and Indianapolis. And then Pittsburgh and San Diego jockeying for the three of the four. Actually, San Diego has the better conference record, and if they both won out, then San Diego would be the three. Jacksonville's locked in as the five. So one spot you're trying to sort out in Tennessee again with two wins would nab it. The second and 11. Great throwing play ball tipped. One of the keys today for the Miami Dolphins, we talked about it. They want to run it. They want to run it to the inside linebackers. Junior Seau, Teddy Bruschi. And my first impression is Junior Seau and Teddy Bruschi, they came to tackle today. Yeah. And they are flying around. They've got energy. And we heard it. The players were griping and crying up here this week because Bill Belichick put them in full pads. And this time of year, they're probably the only team in the league that was out in full pads working. So Vince Wilford got the deflection. Third down. Harrison in the face of the quarterback. And Lemon finally is going to be taken down by Vrabel. You said the two names. How about that? Rodney Harrison, Mike Vrabel. They find different ways to pressure the quarterback. The big guys get in the quarterback's face, and it allows the outside guys Mike Vrabel, Rodney Harrison gives them more time to get to the quarterback, and they usually do. Brandon Fields for the fourth time. And there was some heat coming in from the outside by Kelly Washington, who had a block punt last week, and another fair catch called by Brown. Brady. Back onto the field already with two touchdown passes. Well, the New England offense ready to begin. Perhaps another march. From the 32. Remember, they piled up 42 points in the first half down at Miami. And it's Welford. He's now one catch away from 100 on the season. He's two away from tying Troy Brown's team record of 101 on a year. What are, you, what, are the Dol, uh, what are the Dolphins thinking as they see Wes Welker? We said it to Jason Taylor last night. You see Wes Welker catching all those passes. He goes, look, when he came down here as a free agent sitting out there, we watched him. You could tell after a couple days that he was a player. A playmaker. A playmaker. The guy can play. And of course, I'm saying, why is he still there? <laughs> A lot of folks are asking that down in Miami. Second and two, and Brady 
dives get away from the sack chased by Jason Taylor and it nets a yard Jason Taylor again sets the Dolphin record today for consecutive games played we had a chance to meet with him last night I mean he's been through a lot in his years at Miami yeah I've been through a lot yes he's happy to win the game but I thought Jim I'm just reading into what I saw that he's been through that OK so Bill Parcells is coming Oh, OK well Nick Saban was coming Jimmy Johnson came just tired of the losing Maroney look out he's going to take it all the way fifty nine yards yes and the one thing that we even talked about that you're afraid of the emotions can you just find a way to fight and be ready to play because that's what you got to do against a good football team when you're away from home which the Miami Dolphins are and look at this Wesley Britt Matt Light blanket Logan Mankins Oh, the blocks everybody just not nobody in the running lane wide open Lawrence Maroney goes untouched for the touchdown Maroney with two rushes over 50 yards in this half and now he's already eclipsed 51 yarder a 59 yarder and what a block two by Heath Evans by Heath Evans yes Heath Evans special teamer here he is on the kickoffs tremendous blocker can catch and oh by the way a former Dolphin oh. one yard out love the salt in the room oh. and that is Evans Brings that return to a sudden stop on Gen Jr. Everybody wants to be a part of the action. Heath Evans 44. Look at the lead block. Oh my gosh, just takes the linebacker. Couldn't even tell who it is. He just covered him up. And then on the kickoff team, he's excited about the block. He knows he helps spring Lawrence Maroney for the touchdown. Gets down and makes the tackle. Pass was deflected and it was thrown to Ted Ginn Jr. Not sure I've ever seen a back get this open this quickly. Well, Jim, look, the two instant look at the guys, both assists like watching the Vince Lombardi uh, teaching reel. A seal here, a seal there, and up the shoot, and there he goes. You don't see that in the National Football League. And they've now tied the single season touchdown record. That had belonged alone to the Dolphins of 84. 70 on the season, and no doubt more to come. And Chapman, just for two yards. I'll tell you what, too, Jim. If you're the Miami Dolphins, you got to tell yourself, all right, you better be ready to fight and play hard all the way through because we've seen. Many times this year, the New England Patriots, they're going to keep playing. And they're going to call their plays like this game is zero to zero or seven to nothing. And then the, they're going to keep attacking, keep trying to assault you on both sides of the football. Marty Booker had been bruised a little bit on that one catch he had. He was questionable to return. We've got flags stopping this play, but Booker's back out on this snap. Just brought to a halt. Ron Winter to explain. Ball start. Offense number 76. A five-yard penalty. It remains third down. You know, as the as the engines just keep revving up and piling up points on the Patriots side, Cam Cameron certainly was accustomed to not quite at that kind of pacing or level output, but his offense last year at San Diego, they lay led the league in scoring. And now, of course. New England blowing right past that. And they're just 12 points away from having the most points ever by any team in a season. Lemon, Jarvis Green, sack time at New England. At the start of the game, what was it? Don't give them any hope. And it's the coverage down the field. And Cleo Lemon. Kind of getting locked in, but you can't blame him. 
because he doesn't think he has time to scan the field. That time, he has the protection, nobody open, then he gets sacked. The sixth, actually six and a half sacks on the season now for Green. Punting from the goal line. Brown has it. Oh, right off the face mask at the 50. It picked up right on one bounce by Spragan. I don't think you can advance if that's qualified as a muff. But uh, just right off the face guard of Troy Brown. Jim, you're right. So they'll actually mark the ball back on the Miami side of the field where it was recovered. The punt was muffed by the receiving team and caught by the kicking team. At that point, the ball becomes dead in their possession. First down, Miami. Troy Brown back. It's live action. Does he take his eye off of it? Doesn't look like it. Looked like he was concentrating on it. Hits him on the helmet. Maybe the wind caught it just a little bit. Just enough to take it offline and cause him to miss it. Set up the Dolphins at their 45. Chapman bounced and going to lose yardage after trying to make something out of it. Thomas takes him down for a six yard loss. He was first hit by Vince Wilford. Just getting overpowered up front. And we talk so much about New England's offense and everything that they do. You know why they can do it? It's the offensive line. And you look at the Miami Dolphins, and we all know the news. Bill Parcells coming down there, uh, kind of taking charge of the organization. I know that one of the first orders of business will be is to make the offensive line good enough and strong enough to allow the skill guys to have a chance. Sam Congato is in, and Gatto gets the handle, and Bruski wrestles him to the ground after three. So Bill Parcells, and of course you're better than anyone to tell us what he'll bring to South Miami, to South Florida. You want the good stuff or the bad stuff? <laughs> I want the real stuff. Well, you know, he brings tremendous credibility. He brings attention. And there's something about him, his presence, of course. And he's going to go down in a different role than he's had in his NFL career. One year with the Jets, the general manager. But getting players, that'll be the number one thing. Harrison almost had a sack. Lemon able to get his feet back. Throws on the run down the field into triple coverage. And it falls incomplete. So unable to cash in off the turnover. Wilson and Merriweather and others. Randall Gay, they were all down there defending. Oh, yeah, you know, he gets out of the pocket. Nobody's open again. Look at that double coverage across the field. Then when he breaks the pocket, it's just a hope shot. It's a hope shot. Three defenders knocked up in the air. Play the game, throw it out of bounds if you're Cleo Lemon. So Wes Welker comes in for Troy Brown now on the return. The Brown muffs the last one and bring in Welker. He calls for the fair catch, has it at the 20. Six and a half to go, second quarter, 21 in defense as the week before. So a glimpse of Trent Green, the ski cap. So now the Patriots. From the 20. And that's Moss. Well, they've got a new franchise single season record. I don't think anyone's going to be surprised that they've established that. That pass goes for 11. Josh McDaniels working in concert with the quarterback. up another seven maybe eight yards Wednesday January 2nd the hit game show with the questions that have America talking returns five questions could win you ten million dollars Drew Carey hosts the power of ten back on CBS Wednesday January the second all right so this New England offensive line another part of this uh, domination here today and watch them on second and two now, of course he set that one up just right. Good Jason Taylor heard the cue and drops Maroney for 
a two yard loss. You know, you know Jim when you see Jason Taylor what did Matt light we talked to him on Friday he goes Boy, I just keep waiting for that year where Jason Taylor I can go you know he's slowing down Yeah, he lost a step just to just please give us some hope but he doesn't and when you look at Jason Taylor you can tell he's tall he came in the league as thin and he's always not he's not going to lose that ability with speed and to be somebody that can bend and get around pass rushers just because of the way he's built third and four for Brady and the Patriots the sideline good grab by Gaffney that pass got right over the outstretched arms of Courtney Bryan for 14 yards you heard me say earlier they throw it so much you just get good at so many facets of the passing game you got good coverage it doesn't matter you throw it past the defender and Tom Brady goes I know it's close <laughs> but when the defender is not looking at you he's got your his back turned. that's why he threw it even though the coverage was tight Back on the Miami end of the field and he just plows ahead for a yard Again, Brady moving in on some records, including that single season Manning mark of 49 established back in 2004. And there's uh, Marino. Dan had 48 and 84. One more for Tom to tie Dan. Okay, the Miami Dolphins, the one thing they've done, the one positive is they have pressured Tom Brady today. Dom Capers, their defensive coordinator, says, you know, over the years, not saying we win, but we have had a chance to hit Tom Brady. Brady down the field, and the ball is caught. The ball is caught by Gaffney for a touchdown. And Brady joins Marino at 48. How did Lance Schulters not come away with the theft? Jim, I thought he picked it off. Tom Brady knows it's going to be close. Here comes the safety help. He throws it in between. Oh, my gosh. And Lance Schulters even cradles his arms like he's going to make the catch. Well, it helps when you have an arm where you can fire it in into a tight situation. And Gustowski, who's now converted more point afters in one season than any kicker ever. 28 nothing. We've been watching Moss and Brady and Stallworth saying how did he how did that ball get through there. Stallworth had his hands up in the air his shoulders just misplayed it. The ball went above his arm. His arms. Well, Lance Schulter still shaking his head on the sideline. But I will say this, Tom Brady, he threw it perfectly from his end. Lance Schulter's played it perfectly, just missed the interception. So Gaffney now with his fifth touchdown of the season. Schulter's will still be shaking his head when he looks back on the film of that one, because he had it played. Again, Junior with a little running start at the nine up the middle to the 31. And when I say Tom Brady threw it perfectly, I mean he got every ounce of energy into the throw, just step, steps up and rips it. I got it. No, I don't. It's right above his arms. No, right, actually when threw I, him. Yes, it went. He, it's like he pulled his hands in at the last second. That's why he missed the interception. And that was an injury timeout. Kyle Echol was slow to get up. Here he is, 38. Hit oh, by his teammate. Right in the right in the stomach. And he's another former Dolphin. You, you really got that storyline going. Well, today. it just seems like about every play is either well, made, you know made by a former Dolphin yeah. or setting a record. Well, see, the Patriots weren't good enough, so 
got to help them out a little. I see. Give them Wes Welker. You know, give them some really good special teams players. They needed. They needed Larry some reinforcement. Izzo. That's right. Another junior say out. First down for Lemon. And that goes to Booker for a first down. Yes, Tom Brady's a little lucky here as you watch this in freeze cam. Look at the separation. He knows it's going to be tight, so he puts everything he has into it. But he has the arm strength to be able to take some chances down the field. Not enough quarterbacks in the NFL take chances down the field, which leads to scores. It's over to Booker. And Asante Samuel almost thought he had the read, maybe not the jump in time to take it back for the quick six. That last touchdown to Gaffney, though, gave the Patriots that touchdown record touchdowns by a team in a season. Now 71. Oh, boy. First half of this season, 70 to 7. Second and one for Miami. Now in New England territory. Booker has the first and chased out by Jarvis Green. Jarvis Green, quite a story. Former LSU man. His Patriot team, of course, in the offseason suffered the tragic loss of Marquise Hill, one of the backup defensive linemen who was a teammate of Jarvis Green's at LSU, and a teammate, of course, here at New England. And Green wears his shoulder pads as a tribute to his college and pro teammate. Now the pass behind Hagan. And we've reached the two minute warning. And it's 28 0 New England. Miami on the Patriots side for the first time. And Jay Feely of the Dolphins, their kicker, has not had a chance to take the field in this one. Since Miami received the opening kick, and there's been no other reason to have him out there. He was a teammate of Tom Brady's at Michigan. Brady was in his wedding. Short pass to David Martin. Goes for three yards. There's uh, Mr. Brady. Tom on the left. Feely alongside. Some pretty uh, happening tuxedos going yeah. on there. At third and seven. That one rifled and caught. And the player is down. That's David Martin at the nine. That had some some heat on it. 28 yards. Yeah, good job by Cleo Lemon. And what he does, it was the reason why he got it completed. He threw it behind the receiver. Otherwise, the safety is going to come over and knock it down. Now, I don't know why they were in such a hurry to get to the line with 111 to go in the half. That was their first play, by the way, for 15 yards. But they ran to the line like there were 11 seconds, not a minute and 11 seconds. It's really, I, I don't know why. That's a, that is bad game management. David Martin, look at it, makes him turn and throws it to the outside before Eugene Wilson could get there. Best throw of the game by Cleo Lemon. Well, they just threw away a, a down. So a second and goal. If anything, you want the time to go away as you finish this possession. And that's thrown away. We've got the sprint halftime report coming. So a third and goal. Remember the last seven times New England's opponents have been in the red zone inside the 20. They have not allowed them in the end zone. This is the eighth. Third and goal. Limit. Squeezes the pass in there. Bruski on. The coverage knocks down Camarillo after a five yard pickup fourth and goal. Jim if it was me I'd kick the field goal just to get just to put just, something up just give my team and say 28 3 let's just play see what happens. They're letting the uh, play clock run down and the game clock to about 20. They'll take the timeout. Again, they would have loved to have had that one down over again. The first down spike. Camarillo with that catch on third down, the hero last week. Yeah, it was some celebration. 
I don't think I talked to one coach or player in the NFL or has ever been involved that was not rooting for the Miami Dolphins to win a game this year because they knew what a burden that would be to them to carry for the rest of their lives as they're attached to a team that didn't win. And when you watch it, it's almost hard not to get emotional. There's the Camarillo catch. Well, they got emotional, all right. Jason Taylor, Wayne Izinga, Cam Cameron sprinting on the field, grabbing Cleo Lemon. How much it must have meant to Cam Cameron to get that victory, too. Beating Baltimore in overtime with that one. So a fourth and goal. 32 snaps in the red zone against this New England defense without someone scoring a touchdown. And they hold back the Dolphins. Limit throws. Bruski knocks it down. And the New England defense not going to let it happen. They were going for Justin Peel. Yeah, it was a good thought. But Teddy Bruski realizes once the receiver comes across in this formation, there's only so much he can do. And he steps in front. Doesn't try to make the tackle. Well, what a nice job. Left hand in front, right arm behind, just in case. The old defense Bruski a couple of weeks ago and talking about that that unit that whole linebacking group and yes. how much they hated to lose Roosevelt Colvin you know we're minus one big personality and the meanings and the meals and there's a whole avoid and you know his his unit certainly aware that they're uh, as an overall team entering rare territory tremendous emotion by the New England Patriots shown here in the first half 28 nothing halftime. CBS. So, Feely on the field. There's Willie Andrews stepping back deep. He returned a kick not intended for him in the first matchup this year. Took it 77 yards for a touchdown. He tried to pooch kick it away from Hobbs, and it came to Andrews that time, and he ran it back. Here he is again. And a good stick, and that will end it. That's Allen with the tackle, and we'll see. Brady and company again here starting the third quarter. Jim Nance and Phil Sims here in Foxborough. What did you make of the first half? Well, I think Bill Belichick, everything he did during the week, he practiced in pads. He practiced them hard. He was upset about some of the things that went on last week. You know, the players, they reinforced it all. So, but the emotion that the Patriots played with on both sides of the ball, they're 14 and 0 playing a 1 and 13 team. It was impressive. And it's just another reason why you can see or another reason why they've had such a terrific year. And again, Brady needs one touchdown pass to tie the Manning record in a single season. He's out here to start things with a little toss to Welker, and that's number 100 on the season for Welker, wrapped up quickly by Courtney Bryan. The first half numbers, New England, 304 yards in the half. Pretty impressive. Wes Welker, 100 catches. It, all players, wide receivers, quarterbacks, you've got to find a system that fits you. Of course, with Randy Moss, the other good receivers, he has found the perfect place for his talents, an inside receiver. Welker, one more catch to tie the Troy Brown single season mark for the Patriots. Over the head of Stallworth. So again, I said it earlier, it seems like every play they're going for some kind of record. They are six points away from tying the Vikings 98 single season scoring mark. You know their first half point total on the season the Patriots which is now over 300 on the season is more than the season output of 14 teams. Of course, Randy Moss was on that Vikings team that set that mark back in 98 and on third down it's Welker with the Patriot record tying 101st reception on the year. Well, what they get you, Wes Welker always running short routes underneath. And you think, okay, it's third and it's it's seven or less. He's going to go past the yardsticks. Watch the little move. A little fake. Oh, excuse me. Let me go on up the field. Look at the defense react to it. And that's what you do. You talk about halftime adjustments. This is just one little thing. You say, hey, they're, they're getting tighter on their coverage. Let's make a move, go up the field. Wes Welker, very good at it and wide open. Finds a seam for 20. 
And they're set up now with the Miami 38. And a little push. And a flag is out on Travis Daniels trying to defend Randy Moss. You mentioned a couple of times how Bill Belichick tried to get his team going again this week. Found a number of things he wasn't happy with. Pass interference. Defense number 29. Penalizes the spot of the foul and a first down. After the 20 to 10 win over the Jets, when we met with Bill on Fridays, you'll see Daniels flagged for the second time in this game for interference. Oh just pushing gosh. Moss. Hey, Bill telling us on Fridays, hey, our offense only came up with three points last week. Uh, what did you think of your performance? Like? We, we scored three points. Yeah, so you go back on the field, you work on the fundamentals. One of the reasons why they've had continued success, no! they work on the little things that can drive you crazy. But Bill Belichick and his staff, they don't get tired of teaching it over and over. They went back to some of those fundamentals this week, and they're working so far here today. I'm out in New England. Of course, what he meant by that, what he said, uh, the offense was only responsible for three points. The defense and the special teams were the ones who starred. But the offense is doing it today. Four touchdowns already. Brady called the timeout just to beat the play clock. So they'll come back out first and 10, moving on this first drive of the second half. 29 yard line of the Dolphins. On fake, going deep to the end zone, picked off. That's Allen with the interception. Jason Allen running it out. Should have stayed in the end zone, but he'll take it at the 10 yard line as Brady throws only his seventh pick of the season. They're going for Randy Moss. And Jason Allen saw it coming. So a rare mistake by the Patriots. Brady throwing the interception, his seventh of the year, versus the 48 touchdown passes. And now Lemon goes across the middle to Chapman breaking tackles was stepping right out of a couple of the tackles and finally knocked down by Thomas. What happened on the pick? Well here let's look at it Jim. Here's Jason Allen. Tom Brady is trying to make him think he's going down the middle so he can throw it down the sidelines to Randy Moss. Watch Jason Allen. He stays square. Doesn't turn one way or another until Tom Brady throws it. That allows him to make the move get the interception. And when you're a quarterback, that's a chance you don't mind taking. Try to get him safety out of position so you can get a one on one with Randy Moss. Chapman hard earned 22 yards on the little pass. They come back over to him. The Braver waiting and others. Sante Samuel chops him out after three yards. Brady had thrown a pick in the first home game this year. Clinton Hart for San Diego, but then he went 252 passes at home before Revis picked them last week. And then another one today, talking about home performances. Gets 21 touchdowns. Second and seven from the 35. Lost this one. Peel unable to bring it in. Coming up tonight on 60 Minutes, it's Tom Brady. A look at Tom Brady. Can't get away from him. You will. Why would you at That's this right. point? Have this kind of year, you deserve the you attention. You want to know a little more, don't you? Find out tonight all about Tom Brady on 60 Minutes. He'll be so upset. Forget all the touchdown passes today. He'll want to come back out here and throw tonight after this game ends. <laughs> after after that interception. He's still smoking. He's still seething on the sideline from that interception. Timeout, Miami. Mawia Christmasi, Matos on full. Yes, Regan. Mawia paying heritage, uh, paying tribute to his Samoan heritage. And happy holidays to all of you. Third quarter here in Foxborough. And a third and seven for Miami from the 35. In and out of the hands of Hagen as Samuel reached in there to make it impossible to hold on to. And Eugene Wilson added a second hit. 
Yeah, Asante Samuel, the best cover guy on the New England Patriots team. Cam Cameron, oh, he, got to, he gets a hand on it, Jim, and Cam Cameron has said to us last night, you know, we're going to throw a few passes to the right side, but I don't want too many going over there against Asante Samuels. It's, you've got to give him respect because if you keep throwing there, he is going to pick one off. Seventh punt of the day in the fields, and Troy Brown is back in as the returner. And he takes it right out of bounds at the 22. Variation of a Christmas Carol. The 2007 Pats will go down in history as Mr. Kraft. He's been hosting the Red Sox family here today. Brady still gets the pass away. How about that move by Jason Taylor? Boy, he is. He had he had Brady wrapped up about four different ways. Well, Matt Light, left tackle. Jason Taylor to your left. He's a speed rusher, so you're thinking, oh, he's going to try to beat me around the outside. And immediately off the snap of the ball, he goes inside and gets free. And Tom Brady showing his strength today, able to find enough space and room to throw it away. Jason had a pick in that first game this year against New England, picked off Matt Castle and returned it for a touchdown. Now it's Maroney. And Maroney with a run for six. And it's Taylor on the hit along with Brian. Maroney in that first half again had two rushes over 50 yards, 51 yards, and a 59 yard touchdown run. The only other back this season in the league. To have two carries in the same game over 50 yards was Adrian Peterson of Minnesota. Yes. So the third and four with Maroney and Falk in the game. As again, the Patriots today going without their first two tight ends. With Watson and Brady sitting down, Cal Brady. Meanwhile, Tom Brady out of the pocket on the run, and the ball is intercepted off the deflection. That's Derek Pope with the pick at first was in the arms of Randy Moss. Pressure by the Dolphins defense the quarterback moves and then the excellent coverage down the field and the downside to throw it into tight coverage. If it gets knocked up in the air there's going to be other defenders there. Watch Randy Moss 81 trying to pick up the first down. He goes up the field but he sees Tom Brady scramble. It's a good throw. What a job by Will Allen putting his arm up in between Randy Moss's, knocking it up in the air. So it could be intercepted by Pope. A little play action by Lemon. Brable chasing. Brable gets the sack. Mike Brable is a defensive end. I know he plays linebacker, but he's a good pass rushing defensive end. So when he gets matched up against Justin Peel, who's a tight end, his forte, no matter how good you are, it's you can't be a great pass blocker as a tight end. Vrabel in his 11th year, getting that recognition this last week, named to the Pro Bowl for the first time. Like a number of Patriots getting that honor recognition for the first time. On the draw, Chapman. Hard running. Finally, Samuel slows him down, but 17 gain. Well, Jesse Chapman, Cam Cameron, pretty excited about him coming in today. Thought he could. Everything fell their way. They get some breaks, make some plays, and his running because he can break tackles. He's compact. He's strong. And playing really on a tender ankle that sidelined him last week against Baltimore. A player who was out of the league the last two years, but Cam Cameron familiar with his work down in San Diego. Ted Ginn Jr. And that's a Davis Thomas tackling him from behind, but a gain six.
Well, the Dolphins defense comes up with two interceptions in a three throw span. And that last one, though, off the deflection, and Brady had put it in there for Moss, who was only able to somehow get one hand free. Second and four, pass from behind Marty Booker. And the crowd here, after so much energy expended in that first half, coming out here a little flat like the like the Patriots team. Well, you're right, Jim. The crowd's a little flat. The Patriots have made some mistakes here in the second half. It is the NFL. And as good as the Patriots are, and even though the Dolphins are one and thirteen. It's hard to dominate from start to finish. So there's going to be some lulls. And now they try to channel that energy. What makes you great is to survive the lulls. To the Patriot defense just beating the play clock on third down. Lemon with Thomas chasing. A double reverse move by Lemon on the run. Throws across his body and has the first. That's Booker with the grab for eight yards, and they'll move the chains. Oh, you got to smile after that one, Cleo. That is some move by him. Nobody open. And as he scrambles, what's impressive is he goes back, he goes, I can't outrun him. So he there's nothing to lose. Nothing to lose in the fact as a quarterback, before a play is the ball is snapped, sometimes where you are, if you're between the 40 going in and the 40 coming out, you go, well, I can take a sack. It's not a big deal. So you take some gambles moving around the pocket. Cleo Limited did it that time, and it resulted in a first down. At the New England 20. Inside handoff and Booker for five. Lemon, one of 12 quarterbacks to start a game this year in the league who came into the league undrafted. Of course, Tony Romo would be in that category. Mm -hmm. John Kitna among those. It was interesting hearing Cleo last night talk about that New England defense and how he felt like they really picked up a rhythm against the Patriots in the second half of that game down at Miami. But saying that they're so good at play recognition. Yeah. Which I've heard from many quarterbacks. As the game gets on, we heard it from Ben Roethlisberger. They recognize formations. They know when you get in certain formations, there's only so many plays you can run. It's Chapman. It's the move inside to pick up the first. And finally, Sanders. Able to get the takedown at the five, a 10 yard run, setting up first and goal. Wow. That was some collision down inside. Good cutback by Jesse Chapman. And then we talked about he's a tough runner. James Sanders, pretty tough guy himself. So this is the second time the Dolphins have been inside the 10 today. Failing to produce any points just before the half, turning it over on downs. Sam Congato, who has scored three touchdowns the last two weeks, picks up three yards. Here's the run. Just listen. And this was a couple of plays ago, actually, where Lemon was running for 30 yards to complete the eight yarder for the first. Chapman comes out a second and goal and Gatto again has been a short yardage man a goal line back in the last few weeks they try to go up top instead a little sidearm toss to peel and he's inside the one another nice play by Cleo Lemon say what Cleo Lemon's doing he did last week and he's done it times this year today Next week, trying to solidify a, a spot on this roster for next year for himself. You talked to him last night about you have to feel like now you found a place in the league. You know you, know you belong. Oh, no question. No matter what happens, he has definitely earned a future in this league. He's going to be a quarterback somewhere. Third and goal. Fake to Gatto. Throws it, and it's incomplete. 
Now's Eric Alexander on the coverage. He was going for David Martin. Originally, they fool the defense. Here it is. You come out there, throw it. Oh, and he tries to throw it behind David Martin. We've talked about it so many times today. When the defender is not looking at you, throw it up in the air, over the top of him, and all they can really do is pass interference to stop a touchdown. So they're going to go for it, as they did in the first half. Of course, that was from the five. This is inside the one. Mawia, the fullback, oh. Gatto, the tailback. Actually, the other way around. They're going to fake the Mawia and Lemon. Fakes again. He'll take off for it. Did he get the pylon? They say no. Outside of it. They'll turn it over on down. Lemon trying to rush for a fifth touchdown of the season. Can't make that mistake. You get a dive. Get the football inside. The Patriots able to stop the run. Nobody open. Get the ball over the pylon. Nice pump fake. Oh, that's the right call. Doesn't even get close. The challenge has been issued. They threw out the red flag during the break. They want a review of this right here. Okay. Did the ball ever go over the pylon before right. he stepped out? Does the ball go over the pylon as he's in bounds? That's a little different angle there. Yeah, that gives you a little hope. We saw the Dolphin fan. Yes, I didn't see that. We originally did it. Watch the ball. He moves it. Did it go over the pylon? Which, if it goes over to inside of it, that is considered part of the playing field. Well, that's close. Hard to tell from that angle. Of course, if he had the ball in his left hand, you're, you're in jeopardy of Rabel stripping it or knocking it out, but it also would have given a much better chance of getting at least uh, across that imaginary plane. Here's the best angle, Jim. Watch the football. He knows he's going across the pylon. He moves it. Did he move it back? He moved it to the inside yes. of his body, and then he went back outside. Was he already well, across I, the pylon by that point? Now he's on the inside. He was. Um, I didn't see that move, of course, when we saw it live. So, Cleo Lemon definitely aware of where he was on the field and trying to get it inside the pylon. My guess is it will not be overturned. Ron Winter has reviewed it enough. After review, the ruling on the field stands. The runner had the ball in his outside hand. Did not break the point of the goal line. Miami is charged with a second team timeout. Well explained, he had the ball on his outside hand. And again, just like it's been virtually every week, they come up short. Close, a lot, not good enough. A team that's lost six games on the year by three points on the button. So they're at an inch outside of the goal line here and operating from the shotgun. Incredible time looking for Moss Long. And there's a flag that's going to be thrown against, I believe, on Moss. He grabbed the hold of Jason Allen. Don't stand to lose a lot of ground on this penalty. I mean, how much can you knock it back? So I'm sure they'll just uh, decline it. Pass interference. Offense number 81. Penalties decline. Makes it second down. It's a heady play. Don't give the defender any chance to make a pick. I, you know, got nothing to lose except an incompletion. They'll decline it. Yeah, absolutely, Jim. That's that makes a quarterback try it again in the future. If you protect him, it's underthrown. But it's pretty clever. Randy Moss trying to act like you, you know, don't don't catch me doing this. Second down and ten. And that was going for Welker. The Dolphins in this game today 
have had three takeaways and have failed to produce any points off the takeaways. This was for Welker's 100 and what 102nd catch of the season. It was Welker lost sight of the football. The umpire was in the way. I think that hurt. Good play so far in the second half by the Miami defense. Third and ten, covering the receivers. Jason Taylor's gone virtually the whole way. Brady just two of five in this quarter with a couple of picks. Come on, man. Actually, that makes it now two of nine, you should say, in the quarter. And it was intended for Dante Stallworth. Jason Taylor, question marks, would he be ready to play today? And as the game goes along, he's getting stronger. He's used the speed this time, time tries to overpower Matt Light, and Matt Light wins that battle. So Hansen comes in to punt. The second time today. Rare to see a team throw it three times from, the, from its own end zone. Uh, but they know how to do it. it. Just didn't work this time. Hansen gets it away. Beautiful. Oh, is it ever? Can't even be returned. It's going to be 64 yards. I think the fact that he didn't have the space, he's 10 yards instead of 15. He shortens up. And sometimes when you shorten up a motion, Jim, like a golf swing, throwing a football, or punting, the power, and yes, sir, get excited about it. That was pretty special. Shoot, we won a championship game one year because of our punter, Sean Lindetta, 1987. That's one of the greatest punting days in history to, to help us win. That's the longest punt of the season for Hanson. Nine possessions for Miami today. Four times they've been three and out. But twice they failed to produce anything in goal to go situations. Again, Junior quickly. Samuel, he's going to be right there manning that side and shuts it down after three. You can watch NFL players tell their personal stories and help decide what will be this year's NFL Super Bowl commercial. It's only at NFL.com slash super ad. We saw Ted Ginn Jr. catch that little screen pass the play before. Talking about him, Cam Cameron says he's getting better at being a wide receiver. His biggest problem or what he has to work on this offseason, he's tall, is being faster and quicker in tight spaces because that's what the NFL is about. Well, here he is. And that's what you're talking about right there. That was it. You know, when he played at Ohio State, He's the fastest guy in the field. He always had space, a lot of room, and didn't have to worry about getting off to a fast start. Well, in this league, he might be the fastest guy, but it'll be by inches, not by yards like it is in college. That one goes for nine yards and another first down at 47. Well, you're right, just as we talk about it, Jim, that's, that's what you want to be able to do. Catch it and make a quick move and get going forward with very little effort. On first down, Lemon steps away from the pressure, throws off his back foot, throws it out of bounds. It still got decked by Rashad Moore. Tell you what, Cleo Lemon, we talked about it, his feel of the game. He's learned how to deal the football today under pressure. And being the starting quarterback in the league, all the press that comes with it, negative a lot of times, especially when you're losing. And talking about the grind, boy, he's going to have to. He's going to have to get rid of some bumps and bruises and get ready for next week's game. He's never missed a practice. That was what Cam Cameron was impressed about. Four years in the league, and they hand it off to Booker, slicing through into the secondary. And look at Thomas, the linebacker, with the speed to stay with him and get him by the heels at the 30, 22 yards. Funny, isn't it? We were talking last night the shotgun formation. I want to talk about the Dolphins and Cam Cameron comes in. He starts talking about how the Patriots deal so much out of the shotgun. They throw it. How can you run it? And today, the Miami Dolphins have been very successful with their run game with Cleo Lemon in the shotgun and two backs in the backfield. Giving the Patriots a look that they have not seen this year. 
or giving them something different to look at from the Miami Dolphins. So new downs at the 31, and again it's Booker for three. But Lemon, a hundred percent attendance, if you will, at every practice. This goes back to his San Diego days when Cameron was the offensive yeah. coordinator. All during the offseason, you yep. have all those offseason workouts. And that's why he's made it in the league. Yeah, well, that's, that's according right. to the coach. He is not going to. He is giving himself every chance there is. And, and you know, we, what we say, Jim, he's doing it the hard way. An undrafted free agent trying to find a spot in the roster. You get so few stamps in practice, so you've got to impress him with your skill when you do, and you got to impress him with your hard work. He's done that. Second and seven. And that's Martin with the catch. And they spot it. Enough for the first. Actually, that's Marty Booker. Well, Lemon out in San Diego, when they would go into those meeting rooms during the week, and again, he was fourth on the depth chart. He'd be sitting in a room with Breeze, Flutie, Rivers, and as Cam Cameron said, it couldn't help but benefit young Cleo Lemon just being around all of that, never missing anything. Yeah, being around guys that work hard and repair, do all the right stuff. You go well. They're having success. You go. That's if I get my chance. I got to make sure I do all those same things. Booker picks up the first, and Lemon's going to the end zone. Hands open, and it is caught for a touchdown by Camarillo. Beautiful route by Greg Camarillo. They wanted to try to throw some deep balls to the outside down the field. Of course, they wanted to do it against Ellis Hobbs. That time they catch him one on one top of your screen. Watch the move inside sells it. He looks back to the quarterback. That's enough to make Ellis Hobbs go inside. That's why Greg Camarillo is wide open in the corner of the end zone. I wonder if Wes Welker is over there saying wait a minute. Who's that wearing my uniform from last year. <laughs> That's the one that Welker used to at the 83 for the Dolphins. Camarillo who was in San Diego last year with uh, with Cameron. Played on special teams in that playoff loss they had in the divisional round, the Chargers, to New England. That's how he saw action in that game. He caught the winning score last week. He's got the feet down on this one. Yeah, he does. Really beautiful route. When you get a defender off of you, it's not about speed anymore. It's can you deceive him? Can you make him think you're going one way and go somewhere else? And that's what Greg Camarillo did that time. Just was patient, looked inside, and when Ellis Hobbs looked in there with him, that's all you need, a little space, and another good throw by Cleo Lemon. A lot of plays being made by the Miami Dolphins offense in the second half. And for New England, it's just been a struggle since they came out for the third quarter, a little sluggish, a struggle, and Brady staying loose. This is commonplace to see him just constantly on the sideline. Just loosening up. Two of nine though in this half. Loosening up, but Jim, it's 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 about finding a rhythm. And that's all he does. He does that to keep himself in rhythm. There's Feely's boot. That's Kevin Falk. And the five. And bouncing around 27-yard line. We got a little freeze cam here. Watch how it starts. The protection. Look at the space Cleo Lemon has. And look down the field. Receiver spread across. What a shot. Ellis Hobbs looking inside. And then when Greg Camarillo breaks out, that is that is perfect execution. Good design by the coaches. And call, of course, the biggest thing of all, calling the right play at the right time. Well, they went four wide with a shotgun, just an inch out of the in zone. Now they'll go with the I formation. First down at the 26. And Maroney taking it to the side. And behind Nick Casher and Russ Hochstein goes for two. Patriots going to change up here. It's their show they'll do. Two backs giving you different looks. So what happens? They get a few yards, take the backs out, and let's bring receivers in. You know, they do that for one play anyway. They spread it out again with Falk, the running back. The 
it's Moss. He dives to the 39. That will probably run out the third quarter. Well, the Dolphins won the quarter. The only score, the pass from Lemon to Camarillo. And that is, in fact, going to end the third quarter. 28-7 Patriots. Back after this message and a word from your local station. We start the fourth quarter. Jim Nance and Phil Sims and all the crew. Mike Arnold, our director. Lance Barrow, our producer. As the Patriots hand it off to Falk. Some nifty footwork for five yards. As the Patriots today go for the 18th consecutive regular season win, which would tie the all-time record. One they already possess that went across the 03-04 seasons. In fact, that last regular season loss for the Patriots was at the hands of Miami last December. Down there. So they can tie that here today. And they get the three touchdown cushion going to the fourth. The second down at five. Here's for Miami. They had not won until last week since that victory over the Patriots. It had been more than a full calendar year between their wins. Brady loading it up. Loading it up really long and there's contact no flag. I'll tell you, Tom really uncorked a ball about as far as you can throw it. Yeah, he did. And if there was contact, I think Randy Moss initiated it. The one thing that happened in the first game, Tom Brady launched a couple of these four touchdowns to Randy Moss. But this time, look, as you look down the field, double coverage. Jason Allen is there. Oh, that ball flew about 67, 68 yards in the air. Yeah, and I was wrong. Lance Schulters comes over and runs into Randy Moss. And Moss it creates all the contact. Steps to the sideline, third down and five. Here comes Taylor, and he's got Brady. Incredible. Jason Taylor limped around for so long, I thought, there's no way he's going to have to come out of this game. And now, pass rushing becoming a huge factor. Look at that. Swat and Matt Light's arms down. But it does take a long time. Tom Brady holds it. Nobody open. That extra time to a great pass rusher allows Jason Taylor to get the sack. And Hanson, and I'll tell you, any time, you know, it was a clean hit, of course, but any time you see Brady hit and he doesn't know it's coming, if you're a Patriot fan and you've got this magical season, you're holding your breath, and the ball's out. And it's Camarillo, of course. He's everywhere with the recovery. Merriweather stripped it. Camarillo recovers. Dolphins ball. A lot of talent right there, led by Richard Seymour. And there's Thomas. That's the biggest greeting card you'll <laughs> yeah. ever see. Miami from the 11. Booker in the backfield gets the handle. And running behind Lewinsky and Vernon Carey. With JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, Coach Cower. Next Sunday on CBS. It's a second and six. And the pass over the head of Hagan. Mike Grable made him throw that ball probably a little off course. He had his arms up. Cam Cameron. And it's the a question of certainly it became the hot topic here in recent days with Bill Parcells again taking over football operations. He's going to be down in Miami this week. They have a tie talking about Cameron and Parcells. Of course they've met each other. Cameron telling us last night has great regard for Parcells but hasn't spoken to him since he took the job. Bobby Knight is a real common thread there. Cameron played two years for Bobby Knight basketball in Indiana two sports star Knight and Parcells of course really close pals. Third and six. 
And of course, Cameron also, as you see, it bounced off the hands of Merriweather. Cameron also was a head coach of football there at his alma mater, Indiana. What do you think of Cameron's future with Parcells in Miami? Well, I, I think he's going to have a very good chance of staying for, for a couple reasons. As you watch the Dolphins this year, they have not quit on him, even though they were at 0 and 13 at one time. And two, too many times in the NFL, we make they make changes at organizations and it hurts. You need continuity. And I think the continuity, the system, keeping Cam Cameron there with Bill Parcells there, guiding with helping in personnel, I think it's a pretty good combination. It's Troy Brown getting some running room this time, running side to line to sideline. Now turns it up and out at the 47. Brady's going to be coming back out. That was a 54 yard boot, 16 yard run back. Still 21 point margin. With 12.34 remaining and back with New England. The Patriots have been shut out here in the second half after a Maroney touchdown run of 59 yards and three Brady touchdown strikes in the first half. And it's Maroney butting heads into the secondary and all the way to the Miami 40 for 13 yards behind Heath Evans. Yeah, the Patriots, they want the knockout punch, and this is a drive to do it, to take it down the field, reestablish yourself here in the second half, feel good about what you've done in the game. You know, winning 28 to 7, I'd feel pretty good. But, and then you don't have to worry. Then you can take Jim, as you said earlier, you can take Tom Brady and a lot of the starters out because the result will be there will no longer it will no longer be in doubt well, it's Maroney and he is absolutely buried by Taylor lost lost four yards here's the lineup tonight on CBS again at 60 minutes and again one of the featured subjects tonight will be Tom Brady tonight on 60 minutes then the amazing race we're down to five teams. Then in God's name, a unique and enlightening special all tonight on CBS America's Most Watched Network. Second down and 14. Again, Brady one away from tying the Peyton Manning touchdown pass mark. Got Moss open. Moss almost was not able to generate the catch, but he uh, grabbed it down low and clings on to it for 16. They double Wes Welker. Look at that. So what's that do? That leaves Randy Moss singled going over the middle. And when you put Wes Welker and Randy Moss together, you would think one of them, one on one, with a pretty good chance of getting open. Tom Brady knows that. So they've thrown to Moss 10 times in all. Five for 50 and two touchdowns. Well, the Dolphins, they didn't want to give up any of those big plays today and then in the passing game and they've done that. Brady now sideline route incomplete going for Gaffney. Fafita was one of the rushers getting in on the quarterback and actually got a little bit yeah. of contact. I talked about Cleo Lemon you know, to get rid of some bumps and bruises tomorrow and I, so will Tom Brady. Tom Brady in his career as a starter, Phil, is 96 and 26, including postseason. 70 games over 500, but all time 8 and 5 against Miami, as you mentioned in the first half. Miami's always been a troublesome spot for him, although he piled up those huge numbers in that perfect quarterback rating game one this year against them. Right. I remember back three years ago on this weekend when they went down and Miami at that time had a. 2 and 11 record and the, the Patriots had uh, a 12 and 1 12 record and, one. and and they beat them down there Miami won it in thriller 29 28 Tom, I think Tom Brady threw three interceptions they think four interceptions Wow so third and long the move inside 10 minutes and they go for it on the ground and fall never able to get a full stride only for one Nobody's even moving on the Patriots sideline. Yeah, they're going to go ahead. And I don't think they concern themselves too much with records, but I know everyone here would like to see Brady at least get a piece of that passing record here at home. They'll be at the New York Giants next Saturday night. So we'll keep the offense on the field on fourth and seven.
Can they keep the drive alive? Ball comes out. It's fumbled. It'll be Miami's ball anyway. No matter who recovers. Well, it was stripped by Joey Porter and recovered by Courtney Bryan. Fourth turnover of the day committed by New England. Miami has the ball back. Nine minutes to go in this one as New England has been blanked in the second half. They have scored the Patriots in every half this year. So far not in this one. And Dolphins recover the fumble at the 28. And Lemon gets a chance to come up close and greet Richard Seymour or the other way around. Loses eight. The initial receiver covered. Richard Seymour just keeps fighting inside with Chris Lewinsky. And that's what makes the Patriots a little different from most teams in the NFL. Their interior linemen, who you would say, hey, they're the run stoppers. They're pretty good pass rushers, too. The front line of Seymour, Wilfrick, and Warren, all former number one first round picks. There's a nifty move by Ginn Jr. before Merriweather, another fellow first rounder from this year's draft. Absolutely sticks him, but it picked up 10. Yeah, you're right. We talked about it. Quick movements in small space. Ted Ginn Jr. showing that. Mayweather pretty quick himself. Yeah. He brings speed to that Patriots defense when he comes in. Good job by Merriweather making a tackle. Still because of the sack, even with the 10 yards, third and eight. Over to Hagen. Oh, oh, pick it up. Oh, 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 bounce off oh, oh. Incomplete, they rule it. Hagen makes an appeal, and it was right in front of the Miami bench. Maybe they had a close look and could challenge. Oh, went through his arms, sure hit the did. ground. Well, you can usually tell by the receiver, Jim, when they get up, they have they show no objection. It tells you the ball probably hit the ground. So Tom Brady over on the sideline put his helmet on, so he's coming back down as Troy Brown lets this one bounce. And it settles at the 20. Here's one more look at it. And nope, Hagan. I don't know why he was trying to make an appeal. New England ball. We were back and as uh, <laughs> they serenade inside the stadium, everyone with a little version of the Bing Crosby classic. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Patriots are dreaming of one more touchdown. Yeah, That's they are. Man. Preferably for their fans, they would like to see it be Brady to Moss. Trigger about two or three more records. Points scored, touchdown catches, touchdown passes. Maroney adds to his career high total. He's now up to 130 yards rushing. And we'd like to welcome those of you who saw Tennessee hold on to beat the Jets 10 to 6. So now the Titans move into the final week of the regular season. And if uh, the Titans beat Indianapolis next week, they will take the final playoff berth on the AFC side. I like their chances. Indianapolis, they have shown they will arrest everybody at the end of the year. The game next week means nothing to them. See a whole lot of Jim Sorge. Saw Tony Dungy's quote. If you need us to help you, tough. Brady's pass too high for Welker. And for those of you expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS, the Dolphins and Patriots. Uh, Jim Nance here with Phil Sims. It's 28 to 7, New England. It was 28 nothing at halftime. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following this game, except on the West Coast, and you'll have that, of course, at your regular time. Again, Tom Brady, one of the subjects tonight on 60 minutes. It hasn't been a uh, Brady-like second half. It really hasn't been a Patriot uh, second half of anything we've seen this season. And they uh, now step up here with Brady launching it long. 
Moss running under it. And it's incomplete. There's a flag back in the area of the line of scrimmage. Remember, it worked a couple of times just airing it along with Moss when they played down at Miami this year, twice. Holding. Offense number 67. Penalties decline. Makes it fourth down. Well, Jim, it works for a lot of reasons. The talents of Randy Moss, but also because Tom Brady can turn and wind up and heave it with the best of them. And Randy, oh, just the last second, Will Allen tips it. Otherwise, again, Randy Moss was going to adjust to the football, and you see everybody else flying by. So a fair catch, good, another good punt by Hansen. 49 yards it traveled. Just trying to go through the timeline, if you will, for these two teams. You go back to December a year ago, and that's when the Dolphins blanked the Patriots. Patriots losing in that AFC Championship game. They had the 18-point lead. Colts came back to win it. Cameron about the same time named the Miami coach. Miami falls to 0-13 as the Patriots rolled all season long. Last week, the Miami breakthrough win. Finally get one. We were talking to Cam Cameron last night about some of the legendary names, Hall of Fame coaches in their first year as head coaches in the league. Pretty astonishing when you look at names like Walsh was 2 and 14. Noel was 1 and 13. Tom Landry didn't win a game his first year. It's 0 11 and 1. As Booker slices for about six. Kind of quizzed him on it a little bit last night. He, he was fully aware of what Landry had done that first right. year because he said, he's my idol. Yep, Tom Landry was his idol. Jimmy Johnson won one game. Bill Parcells. Yeah, this will is be interesting. Down there. Right. 3-12 and 1. Just hung on to his job. So the point is, Jim, you need more than a year to establish your program. And this is another good little statement by the Dolphins today. Camarillo makes the catch. They say he was not forced out. He caught it out. Camarillo tries to make an appeal, and this may be a little discussion here. They may say, force out. No, incomplete. So third down on the way. You know, Jim, going back to, to Cam Cameron, my last thing is, as you watch this, as he's forced out there saying he could not have gotten his feet in, didn't get either foot, Greg Camarillo didn't get either one down, but it's important that you have good plans on how to attack the opponent. And then also, how does your team respond to adverse situations? They had so many chances to, to have infighting, to quit under coach. They did not do that. That says a lot about the coaching staff in Can Cameron, too. Third and four. And knocked away and then almost caught on the rebound. Randall Gay on the second attempt just took it out of the hands of Marty Booker, but there is a flag. Pass interference. Defense number 22. Penalize at the spot of the foul on the first down. And is the first penalty of the game top against your, New England. Top of your screen. Good timing. Looked like it when I saw it live. Now that I see a replay, it wasn't good timing. It was excellent timing. He gets there when the ball gets there. Yes, the left hand touch team had nothing to do with the reception. So again, just the first of the game against the Patriots. As Booker with some shifty moves for five. As we've told you, 60 minutes is coming up next, except for those of you on the West Coast. Hey, Lorenzo Booker, Ted Ginn Jr. Guys, it looked like they have the ability to make some plays if you keep giving them the football. Booker was a third round pick this year out of Florida State. And this play whistled dead. Ball start. Offense number 70. A five yard penalty. It remains second down. You know, on the other sideline, you wonder, you, you, you talked a lot about how Coach Belichick came off the Jets win. And, and addressed his team this week to prepare him for this one. What, what do you think is coming up now after this one? Four giveaways today. They have one more regular season game, of course, at the New York Giants, off of a three-game homestand. 
it, it, what do you what do you what are they going to do next week? Well, we know they're going to work hard. The question is next week, Jim. How will they approach it? Will they play all the starters? There is Ty Warren coming crashing in on the quarterback. Belichick just a couple of weeks ago got his 100th win at New England. See the sack by Ty Warren. You're right. And we asked him how he get about, any kind of response to that. Was there any? Yeah, not a whole lot. He had a good friend Jim Farrell sending me. Yeah. A, a, a barrel of cookies. Was there it? was a hundred cookies in it. He hadn't even opened. He didn't know anything about it. He brought them in and showed them to us. We showed them to our crew. They came in with 100 and left with about 20. Yeah, Mike Arnold, 850. Our director. Starting to rain a little bit as Lemon now is just uh, an easy target in the pocket, and Warren's in on the play again as is Junior Seau. Seventh sack of the game as you see the rain falling. We asked the coach of all the trophies and all the things that he's been able to win along the way, what's really the thing that you hold on to that's most special? <laughs> and he, of course, he paused for a while. He said, you know, I have a voodoo doll that I got on the eve of uh, Super Bowl 36, their first Super Bowl win. Right. And someone gave to him. He, he's got such a kick out of it that it's in his office. Well, he saw it when they switched hotels the night before the game where New England beat the St. Louis Rams. And, of course, it was from somebody rooting against him. Troy Brown. And, again, that'll give him some confidence. The KG. 15 year veteran, their all time receiver, runs it back for 27 yards. Well, Jim, you talked about that voodoo, voodoo doll, and here it is. Look at the Rams, a pin stuck into the voodoo doll with the Rams logo. And of course, uh, Bill Belichick, as he saw it, he went, Oh, that's a good omen. He liked it. He liked it a lot. He goes, That's just. And I guess at that time he was looking for anything he could to give him hope against the St. Louis's vaunted offense. And they were huge underdogs. Huge won underdogs. Won the game. Brady's still in the game with three and a half to play. And again, New England's uh, second half production, nil. No points. And then Maroney gallops for eight, maybe nine. Big question I'm asked all the time the, these past couple of weeks. How would New England approach the last two games of the year where they don't have to win. Well, today we saw it. They played their regulars the whole game or up to this point. What will they do next week? And we asked, of course, you asked Bill Belichick that question, and he gave you. Well, that's the answer that, you know, they're consistent. They the, whole, the whole organization about this. And we're going to do what's best for our for football, football team. team. There's Matt Castle, Brady's back up. And, and, and the answer to that is, Jim, like we started off, or we did in the pregame show today. It doesn't matter what you do during the regular season. Nobody's going to care unless you win the Super Bowl. Well, that's the thing that you have to remember is that as brilliant as the regular season can be, that in the end, if you take like San Diego of a year ago, they go 14 and 2, they earn the number one seed, and they lose the playoff game to this New England bunch. At the end, People saying it was a great year? No, of course not. Pittsburgh Steelers, 2004, 15 and 1. Ben Roethlisberger, rookie, great story. They lose the championship game. Nobody cares. Two minute warning. The NFL on CBS will continue in a moment. The last home game of the regular season, and then of course there'll be the one seed throughout as Brady comes out and Castle comes in. Actually, it's not uh, Castle. It's Gutierrez. Rookie from uh, Idaho State. He hands it to Maroney with a flag. So we wait for this call, Jim. I'll answer your question. How will this Hold game? It. Number 65 offense. A Ten yard penalty. Well, they're going to tie the, their, their own record here. There's going to be 18 consecutive uh, regular season wins. Another thing that they don't really put a whole lot of stock in around here. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't talk about records yeah. and all that. They don't care. We have 15 one game winning streaks is how what's going to be said this week. But fans, yeah. but I think the national media will look at it and go, you know, those Patriots, they're showing some cracks because <laughs> when you get to this point and you win as many games as they've won and they won it with not only did they win, they won with some style. 
people loved it. It was different, and they're not doing it as much now, so you're trying to find chinks in the armor. And not scoring against the Miami Dolphins in the second half, that'll just be another look. See? They're not as good as we thought they were. And a little disagreement over here with Porter and Evans. They're going to be uh, racking up that 15th win of the season. First to ever experience 15 and 0 in a regular season with that asterisk of course the Dolphins had a 14 game regular season run back in those days of 72. And again the AFC playoff picture New England the one that was already settled coming in Colts the two. And Pittsburgh wins the division today with the Cleveland loss. San Diego's already won the West. Uh, Jacksonville locks up the first wild card. They're going to be the five no matter what. And uh, we got Tennessee in the hunt, but actually Tennessee is in the front position on this. Tennessee with a win next week against Indianapolis will take the final berth in the AFC if they can pull that one off. So Gutierrez and Maroney teaming up for another play here. Maroney. What a nice performance for Lawrence Maroney. He went over 100 last week, had a career high 26 carries last week for 104. Now he's up to a buck 54 in this one. Dallas secures home field throughout today by virtue of the Packers falling to the Bears. They were thumped by the Bears. So Dallas the one, Green Bay the two. Uh, Seattle is uh, about to close it out on Baltimore and uh, Tampa is trailing in the fourth against the 49ers. Things could be settled in the wild card picture over there but the Giants are in today. They came back from an early 14 point deficit. So just another yard added right there. Somebody you, people ask you I know you hear it too Jim. The playoffs, what's going to happen? When I look at all the teams, I think the New England Patriots and the Indianapolis Colts have a little separation over everybody else, but nothing is a sure thing. I they just, we're seeing it here late in the year. These games, it's, they can all be close, and you're talking about one break can be the difference. You saw Brewski in the frame for a moment there. You made that comment about a series of 15 one game win streaks. Well, Coach Belichick told us the other day he called Brewski the wise man. He said when we had that 21 game win streak, the overall 21 game back in the 03-04 stretch, he said that's when the wise man Brewski turned it 21 one game win streaks. Well, it's going to be 18 regular seasons wins that is going back to the since the Miami defeat of a year ago in December, 15 and 0 on the season. Although they were blanked in this second half, first half this year that they did not score. Bill, I got a little something here for you before we go. A little Christmas gift. This date in history, on this day today, 1984, your first career playoff start as you led the Giants to a 16-13 win over the Los Angeles Rams. That's right. It's a nice day, nice victory. We were underdogs. You could at least look like you're enjoying it now. Well, I mean, back you know, then, I know you didn't. I heard it last night. Y'all showed this. And I thought, <laughs> oh no. And what did all of you say? We didn't even throw a touchdown pass. So that's why I'm a little careful.